Hi everyone, Heath Schumacher here again. Alright, so for this next video, uh, what we're going to be doing is basically optimizing the RIP Pro settings for the M series uh, DTG printer. So what I'll do is open up my software and uh, we'll go through and kind of explain some of the different settings and how to get this kind of optimized so you get the maximum output uh, and the best quality images out of the out of the software. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go through and adjust all these Q properties. All right, so that way it kind of gives you a little bit better of an output. So what I can do is go up to Qs and Manage Qs. Uh, before we go into the optimizing and everything, I want to explain that with these port settings here, you're going to need to plug in your uh, printer to the actual computer that you're using so that way you can select uh, which USB port. Uh, the way the software works, it automatically defaults to these settings right here. But you will need to change these settings uh, once you have it plugged into the printer. What you'll do is click on the drop down menu and inside there you will notice there will be a MUTO uh, RJ901C with a USB number behind it. Right now I do not have one selectable because of the fact that I, do, I am not plugged into a printer. But you will need to change every single one of these ports for all these queues to whichever one is listed within this drop down menu. So you'll need to do that before you go on uh, doing anything else. Okay, so what we're going to do is prepare these cues uh, for the, the manipulations that we're about to do. First thing I like to do is move this M-Series one pass fast down to the bottom of the queues list. Okay, um, You can stack these any way you want just by manipulating and removing them up and down and things like that. I use my black and color and white quality cues uh, before I use my um, one pass fast cue. Alright, so inside here I can go in and adjust the properties of each individual cue. So the first thing I want to do is click on this little cue properties tab. What I'm going to do here is change every single one of my cues to default for the print mode. Uh, this way I don't have to create copies of these cues later on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these cues. Just change them to default. Once I have all these set for default, then I can make some adjustments within the print mode properties. So that way I get a, a better uh, quality print out of it. The only one I don't change is the M series one pass fast. Okay, so now that I have those all adjusted to default for the print modes, what I'll do is close this out first. And then I'll come up here to my devices drop down menu. From the devices drop down menu, I'm going to choose manage print modes. From manage print modes, you'll notice that I have all those all these different print modes for different types of uh, shirts. Uh, different types of qualities and things like that, even my underbases as well. And we're going to make an adjustment to the underbase as well too to kind of maximize the output of the white ink. Alright, so the first one I'm going to do is I will double click on the print mode and then it gives me these op options. These are a little bit more advanced options but I like to leave mine at the defaults uh, until I get into like a higher level of printing and a more of an understanding of uh, how to adjust these things. If you click on separation curves, this all stays the same. Max ink, same. ICC profiles, those all stay to the defaults. But when I get into printer options, this is where I can change some of my default settings. From in here, I have the resolution of this print mode. I can create other print modes, and I have all these selectable ones. Uh, you might not want to get into this until you get a little bit more advanced. Uh, if you want some further explanation, please call into the support line and we can uh, explain what these print modes would be used for. Uh, for. Just as an example, you can create your own print mode for doing like non-textiles, such as like painted canvases and things like that. All right. Uh, going down, never really change the color plane. Uh, this is the way the printer is set up. CMYK plus four whites. Uh, Bidirectional printing, I usually leave that on as a default, so that way you get a little bit more faster of an output. Under the dot size, I leave the defaults as is. You do have other choices, small, medium, and large. Small definitely uh, prints a little bit more finite, but it doesn't give you the saturation that you need. So this is why this default print setting is set for medium. 
Under media feed adjust, we don't need to adjust that until you've talked to a technician. Um, under quality, I like to default everything to three pass. Okay, what this does, it's not three passes of it going in and out of the printer, it's three passes of the print head swiping back and forth uh, before it advances the platen to do the next band. All right, so uh, return to origin basically means that it's going to eject towards the front of the machine. You always want to leave that on. Under wave type, I definitely want to set this for wave two. Um, not really determine which one of these works best, but wave two has given us the best results. It kind of does an interweaving so that way you get less banding issues. All right, so once I get there, uh, just so I can click on these other ones just to show you what they actually are, you have like half tones. You notice these are uh, defaulted as gray and not enabled. I basically leave these as the, um, as the default. Variable dot setup, same thing. A little bit more of it like the Uber or advanced user. Um, and under criteria, that basically stays default. So under there, I will click on save. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly, is go through and change all those uh, print mode options to the three pass and make sure that they're defaulted to uh, wave two. So I'll de double click on this, go to printer options, change this to three pass, and then change the wave type to wave two. Then click save. I'll just go down the line doing this. So that way once I go in and select the print mode within the queue properties that, that uh, they will always default to the three pass quality printing. Alright, printer options, three pass, wave two is already selected, click on save. And keep going down the line. And then I'll go ahead and skip over the underbases for right now and move over to the white only. And change to, to, to the three pass as well. Okay, so now we're moved back to the underbase. One of the things that I prefer to do is to kind of maximize the amount of white ink coming out of the machine is to double click on my underbase 1440 by 720, which is my quality setting lays down a little bit more ink than the speed setting. Alright, so then I can click on my printer options here. What I will do is change, it, I can change this to three pass, it'll be able to have a little bit more clarity, but if you want the underbase to print a little bit uh, faster, you can keep it at the two pass. Me personally, I like to keep it at the two pass. Okay, but the next thing I want to change is my separation curves. All right. Normally it defaults in here, and for an update that will be coming out within a couple months, uh, or it might already be updated, um, but this is something that you might want to check, is that I want to adjust these so that way they output a little bit higher. So what I'll do is drag this down to around that 95% to 100%, somewhere in there, and just kind of create a little bit more of a lower curve, just so it gradually goes up. So I can just drag these down, okay, then once I get that nice gradual slope here, I'll pause a second for that way that we can write down all these settings. So that way it has a nice transition from, and to kind of just to explain it a little bit, these are uh, basically percentages of what your image looks like. So when it has a 100% ink coverage, it's going to lay down 90% or 97% of the ink and gradually decline back to uh, the different opacities. So if I can see through it to zero, it's going to print to zero. If it's got 5% opacity, it's only going to print 12% ink on it and so forth all the way up the line. So these kind of settings right here with this gradual slope line work really well. Okay, so from here, um, I'm going to save this. Okay, I normally don't use the 720 underbase too often, but I can also click in it, 
go to the separation curve for it as well. And I uh, kind of pull some of these down a little bit more so that way it has a little bit better transition between uh, uh, saturated colors and unsaturated colors. Kind of make it a nice even sweeping curve right there. Okay. All right, so then I can go through and save this out as well. Okay, so now I've got all these set up as a default. All right, so now I can click close. That way when I go back into my individual queue properties, all my default settings will be set for me. Okay, so as I explained, and you've probably heard me mention the word queues several times, queues are basically default settings for printing different types of shirts. We have black queues, quality and speed. We have color queues, anything other than a black quality or a, a black shirt. And then we also have our white cues, which are basically without printing white ink. You can use uh, both of these cues to print with white ink. So that's basically the difference. Uh, the real differences in settings is inside the black cues, we have a feature turned on that's called Not Me Blackout. What that means is you can actually design uh, in your graphics software with a black background, and it will then knock that black out once it's processed and use the black of the shirt to be the black of the design. Okay. So let's go in and kind of get these cues set up and optimized for printing. So the first one I'll do is double click on the black quality cue. And then it'll open up my uh, my cue properties. So from here, for the quality settings, we have the higher resolutions, the 1440 by 720. And then for my speed cues, I have the 720 by 720. It's basically how many t or how close the overlaps of the print head sliding back and forth before it advances the platen. And it has uh, more ink going down. So for my quality cues, I want to use the higher resolution. Um, in here, you have two choices. Uh, since we're dealing with the black cue, we want to print it with an underbase. And these are my white shirt cues. But the two that you see here is graphics versus photos. Okay, Graphics are basically stuff that are like illustrations, something like a logo. Photos, self-explanatory, it kind of uh, tones the saturation levels back so that way it uh, d does skin tones and things like that a little bit better. So for this particular install, I'm going to choose photos. Now if I was printing more logos and stuff, then I might want to print the, uh, the graphics one. Okay, so now from here, uh, just to explain some of the other stuff, these are the names of my cues. I can change the names of the cues if I want to, but uh, for the defaults, I kind of leave these at the same. Um, under here is the printer that it's going to, the print mode that it's going to be using, and the substrate color it's going on. Now, just to explain this substrate color, the substrate color has no bearing on the output of the way the printer prints. This could be pink and it would still print with the settings that I have set in here. It's not going to change anything about the way uh, the print looks when it is finished. Basically what this is used for is the background of the preview here so that way when I look at when I import an image it'll have a black background on it. Okay. Next, hot folders. Uh, hot folders are used for like multiple users, say you have a graphic artist in a different um, location than your actual printer is. Uh, so that way you can uh, basically have people rip stuff and put it into a hot folder to bring over into the queue. This is a little bit more for advanced users and multiple printer setups. Okay, if you need a little bit more explanation of that, please don't hesitate to call into our support line. Alright, next under media. We have our uh, template media. Uh, you will always want it to default to the template media, so that way it uses the predefined templates that we have already made. Uh, I like to default to the 2-up instead of the 1-up uh, for the fact that I do more uh, just single t-shirt printing and things like that. Uh, the one up would basically stretch across both platens and uh, wouldn't give you the ability to kind of size things within here. All right, the next one is layout manager. All these default settings are good to go. Uh, you don't really want to uh, not pause between copies or you don't want to really mirror the jobs or things like that. Um, so leave these uh, default settings there unless you have something very specific and then if you have questions about that, also call into the support line. Uh, under printer status, not much to change here. 
under job reserve. I will want to change the job reserve. Uh, I put a check mark next to save spooled filed on the job reserve for every one of my queues. The reason I want to do this is so that way once I rip something, it'll save the actual ripped file uh, for uh, use later on if I want to do another shirt or something like that. And I don't want to have to rip it a second time. It'll speed up your production. Okay, crop marks are not something that we use uh, here with the uh, RIP software for the DTG printing. It was done for a different printer that's not sold in the United States. Okay, so the next one we have is import options. Under import options, uh, this is how we control our underbase. Under underbase application details, once I click on this, these are the way my, uh, how I can uh, change or adjust my underbases. So from here, um, we have uh, the printing order. It will always stay this um, white and then color. Okay. Uh, the next one down is the knock me blackout setting. The knock me blackout is basically if you design with a black background for printing to a black shirt, what it will do is knock out the black and use the black of the shirt to be the black of the design. Now you have a slider bar that slides up. Okay. Uh, a good analogy for this is like a brightness slider. So you have your image, imagine it as a black and white image, okay? So what this does, the lower you slide this slider bar, the lighter your underbase gets, uh, basically of what it's going to underbase. All right, the higher it is, the more of the image it prints and the brighter the white gets, all right? The default usually works pretty well, okay? Color boost, what it does is basically change the dot size all right, of the actual dot of colored ink going on top of the white ink. Say you, uh, and you probably are not going to really adjust this too much within your black cues. This is mainly used for your color cues. What this does, if you have semi-transparent pixels on the edge of a graphic uh, where you have a big white dot underneath it and then a very light dot of color on it, you can see the white through the color dot, making it look like a, like a milky, like a like a kind of creamy looking edge to your graphic. So by increasing your color boost, what this does is basically make the dot size bigger to cover that white dot up. Now there is a threshold of going too far, um, but this is something that you'll probably have to do some test printing to kind of get used to it. Uh, import the image with say a lower number, print it, shrink the image up, print it next to it with a higher setting and so forth until you kind of dial it into where you want it to go. All right. Now the next one down is your actual underbase print mode. So we have two underbase print modes that we have. We have a heavy underbase and a light underbase. So for the quality cues, I usually default to the um, heavier underbase, whereas for my speed cues, I default to the lighter underbase. All right, underbase strength. What this does is kind of determine what dark colors are and how it handles the underbase underneath those dark colors. If you have your setting to strong, it underbases everything, even the darker colors, like the dark navies, the blacks, the forest greens, things like that. The lower the number goes, the less it underbases underneath dark colors. So if I have this set for weak, it's not going to underbase all these different uh, darker colors, navies, dark blues, dark greens, those type of things. So what I like to do is default it at about 19, and then if I need to adjust it later on, do so. All right, the next fields we have are opacity, gamma adjustment, and highlights. What opacity does is actually choke back how much white ink comes out of the machine. Say I'm getting a lot of puddling of white ink uh, as I'm printing. So if I want to print it, say, 95% of what it was, I can tone that back. I can dial it into whatever setting I want it to be. I would generally start at 100% and see how it prints and then adjust it as needed. The gamma and highlights, I leave defaulted at where they are. I don't really want to mess with those uh, for the fact that if it's a highlighted area, a highlighted area being a visibly white area in an image, I don't want to print it less than it actually needs to be printed. I want to, pers uh, I want to be able to print 100% ink going down on those highlighted areas. All right, the next field down here is your choke. What this does is basically choke the underbase underneath the color. Okay, so say you have a square, okay, and you print it normal, 
and you notice that there is a white edge sticking out on all edges. Okay, What this does is shave off pixels of white so that way it basically tucks it underneath the color. I like to default mine for about three and then kind of work around that. All right, highlight white. What this does is basically during the printing process, um, it will uh, it, your machine basically defaults to not printing white ink during the color pass. White is technically not a color, so it doesn't mix with other colors to make new colors. It only lightens them. So what the highlight does is basically for those visibly light areas like the shine on a fender or the twinkle in someone's eye or something like that where you can see visibly white and there's no color going on top of it, what this does is hit it with a little bit of white ink, a small percentage of white ink uh, for those areas. Uh, it defaults to none for the quality settings because we're using the heavier underbase. But if you want to hit it with just a little bit of extra white ink during the color pass, uh, then it will do so. Uh, usually it'll default to about like nine for a weak underbase. Okay. And then you also have the ability to do underbase repeats as well uh, if you wanted to do two passes. If it takes you two passes of a quality underbase, you're literally going to have a puddle of ink on top of the shirt and it probably will not dry quick enough for the color to go down on it and you will have bleeding. Um, the only reason we have these in there is for like uh, specialty printing such as like foil and things like that. And even doing foil, you'll probably only want to change the number of color passes. Uh, if you want a little bit more explanation on doing these specialty type prints, please call into your support line and uh, we can give you some further explanations. Okay, so now we have finished application defaults. You notice these are all grayed out for the fact that this is not for uh, printing to the uh, DTG RIP Pro or DTG printers. Okay. Next is we have print mode overrides. I never really mess with the ICC profiles or the halftones. I mean, if you're having issues with colors and things like that, please don't hesitate to call into the support line and we can give you some details of uh, how to do some color corrections and things like that. Okay, the next thing I do want to change is my costing. So that way, once I import a job into here and rip it, it'll give me an output of my pricing. Um, you do have the ability to change all these different things. It has no bearing on the output of the printer. It just gives me pricing. Me personally, I only want to know what the actual ink I used for it. So I'm only going to change my ink prices here. Now, a default kind of setting uh, is what I'm going to use is the leader price as according as if I was purchasing it from Coleman and Company, uh, the supply company that is in-house at the Coldesi location. Um, the black ink cost per liter is around 284 if you round it up. Um, also for the colored ink, it, it, I will default it at 284 as well. Now the white ink per liter, I will default to 299. So what this does is basically give me an estimated ink cost uh, after I've been after I've ripped it or printed it, and then I'll show you how to check that ink cost a little bit later. But you do have the ability to put these values in as well, uh, but they're here for your use. But make sure that you set these before you actually print or rip the job, so that way it gives you the proper ink cost. Under log and history, it's just uh, diagnostic stuff for if you ever had a problem, a uh, technician can log into your computer and we can set this stuff up for you or kind of interpret this to see what where the error is coming from and things like that as well. And then under history, it basically uh, total amount of time, the number of jobs processed, along with the uh, statistics of each job proce processed and records and displays it in a list. You're welcome to use this if you want. Okay, so now that I have all those default settings set up, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next queue. I'm going to move through this one a little bit faster. So under print mode, I'll, this is a speed one, so I'm going to choose photos here. I'm going to bypass all these others since I've already explained them. They are the exact same as the other queue. All right, I'm going to check mark next to the save spooled file. I'm going to click on import options under base applications. You notice here that the under base is uh, the lower amount, uh, the lower resolution. We also have the underbase strength and the choke. Like I said, I like to default to three. You notice the highlights are turned on here because it uses the lighter underbase. So that I can click or I can go to now to the other and costing and set up those defaults as well. Once I have those set, 
click OK. Under your color cues, they are a little bit different. So from here, I'm going to choose that print mode for the quality with the underbase. Go down to my job reserve, save spooled file. All right, import options, underbase application. You notice that the knock me blackout is turned off for this one because if you're printing to a colored shirt, you would want to say print black outlines or black details within the image. Okay. So from here, set my costing as well. And then click OK. And I'll keep moving down the line. I'll verify these settings in here as well. Set my costing. and then click OK. Alright, so now we're going to go to the white quality. We're going to choose the white shirt uh, graphics for the quality. I'm going to go to photo. Same thing with the job reserve. I'm going to click on my import options just to be able to show you. There is no under base, so you notice it says color ink only and everything else is grayed out. Okay. Set my costing as well. Okay. Now we have this and click OK. Change this one to the speed setting for white shirts. Job reserve. And then I'll go directly to costing. and then click OK. All right, the next cues, and to access these next cues, I can use my little directional arrows here to kind of show those. I'm going to choose my M-Series white ink only, and then I'll use these bottom two down here. If I want it to print a little bit faster, like I said before, the lower resolution prints faster, but not as heavy. So I'll go to the white ink only cue. White ink only, 1440 by 720 HS. Just to give you a little bit more of a definition of what this HS means, it basically means bidirectional. It's high speed printing. So it basically defaults so the bidirectional printing is turned on. All right. Turn on my job reserve. Show the underbase. You notice it's only going to print with white ink on this because of that print mode that we selected. Since I'm only printing with white ink, I will want to make sure that these are all defaulted to 299. So that way it processes it as if the printer only had white ink in it. I'll click OK. And then the one pass fast, the only things I need to change in here is the job reserve and the costing. And then 299 for the white. Okay, so now that we have all our cues set up to basic default settings, last but not least, uh, to just kind of get everything optimized, is we'll go to Tools and then Options. Under here, I don't really change anything within the Generals tab. Storage and Archiving kind of gives me the space that I'm working with. Under RIP, we have uh, the priorities of how it kind of uh, handles jobs. I usually leave these as the defaults, so that way um, I don't uh, interfere with other programs running in the background. Under processing, I do like to change this to say the number of concurrent jobs that I can do. Uh, it's basically the way I can I can rip stuff while something is printing. Okay, the next one is preview options. Under preview options, over here when you import an image, it gives you a basic bitmap. Okay, it's not going to look exactly like the print file is, but it just gives you a preview of it. Um, the faster your computer is, the higher you can run this stuff at. Um, if you choose low to medium, 
it'll look like a kind of low grainy kind of bitmap over here on the side but as long as you have the software set or your graphic setup is a high quality image it will print it out high quality if you have a faster processor and more RAM in your computer you can set it to very high it does take a little bit longer to process because it has to generate that preview then under there we have our uh, the way uh, using a bitmap driver so I'm going to click on the 8 bits per pixel uh, using the bitmap driver so what that does is just give you a, a higher quality view on your output I have a pretty juiced up laptop here so that's why I set mine this high but if you have a pretty basic laptop maybe you want to leave it at the default settings and then down here at the bottom you have limit uh, number of previews created at the same time so I like to bump that up to three as well because I like to import images while other images are being processed alright so from here I want to click on save and close and that's the basic optimization alright now we're going to go through and kind of show you kind of a, a work through uh, how things are ripped uh, how to look up different stuff how to archive things and some other kind of useful uh, information so I'm going to pause this video for now and then we will start up again with using the RIP software. Talk to you soon.